Welcome to our Student Government Association installation ceremony of our 2022-2023 installation of the Gilliard and McDougal administration. I wanna say thank you all for coming out this morning. And I wanna say thank you to the parents, family, that have come near and far to witness this special installation this morning. I wanna say thank you to our esteemed President Dr. Jimmy R. Jenkins Sr., our 12th president of Livingstone College for being here this morning and the service that he has provided here over his 16 years of tenure. Can we please give Dr. Jenkins a round of applause? And then, of course, to our uh, 13th president, Dr. Anthony Davis, uh, who will be uh, installed soon here. Uh, he has began his reign here as our 13th president of Livingstone College, Dr. Anthony Davis. <laughs> you know, it is a privilege and a pleasure to be here this morning. And I want to thank each and every one of you, faculty, staff, students, alumni, that are here for this, this beautiful occasion, this awesome occasion this morning. So without further ado, I would present the processional of our student leaders. I've been walking with my face turned to the sun. Weight on my shoulders, a bullet in. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Repeat after me, student leaders. And I said, Here I am. Send me. You may be seated. At this particular time, I would like to invite Tamika and Crank Jr., our freshman chaplain, to provide us with the invocation. And then after, we'll we will have the lift every voice and sing. And then from there, you will hear from uh, Mimi Minister, uh, ha uh, Xavier Hamlet, Mr. 1875. How y'all doing today? All is well. Everybody blessed. Uh, we're going to open up with prayer then. Bow your head, close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father God, thank you for this day, Lord. 
Thank you for everything that you've done, doing, and going to do, Lord. Continue to bless us, Lord, and put us on the right path of your righteousness, Lord God. Continue to walk with us, Lord, as we do the things that you ask of us, Lord God. Continue to protect and put your arms around our family and friends, Lord God. Continue to give us the strength to be the blessing that we are, Lord, that somebody else can be a blessing, Lord God. Continue to open the doors, Lord, that we can't open, Lord God. Continue to walk with us, Lord, and be our strength. Continue to be our everything, Lord. We thank you for your grace, your love, your mercy, and everything that you're doing, Lord God. Without you, Lord, we are nothing, but with you, we have everything, Lord God. And we thank you for that, Lord. Lord, we know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, Lord. You said, be strong and courageous. Be not frightened and do not be dismayed. The Lord your God is with you. Lord, we thank you for everything that you're doing, Lord. We give you all the praise, all the worship, and all the glory, Lord, to you only, Lord. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Next, let us all rise for lift every voice and sing.
please be seated. Next, we will hear from Xavier Hamlet, our Mr. 1879.
Somebody shout yes. Come on, one more time. Somebody shout yes. Amen. That's fine. If you need a moment to just give God praise for all that he's done and all that he's going to do. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I'm not here for church service, so I'm not going to go there, but I know that there is a praise on the inside that's working on the outside. Greetings, Blue Bear family. I am Mr. Anthony Brown, Director for Student Activities, and I also have the privilege of serving as the Student Government Association Advisor. Next, you will hear from a selection by Ms. Millennia Rucker, who serves as our SGA Chaplain, and followed by her, you will hear from our speaker today, Pastor Marcus Majette. I'm going to read his bio, and following that will be Millennia, then Pastor Majet. Pastor Marcus A. Majet is a 21st century prophet, preacher, and leader. He is a prolific speaker who evangelizes the lost and revives the redeemed through his charismatic and firm delivery of the word of God. He is considered one of this generation's prophetic voices. At the tender age of 10, Pastor Majet answered the call to salvation. Shortly after, he discovered his gifts as a Levite and a teacher. Pastor Majet believes that he has been called to bridge the gap between the older and newer church without compromising his foundational teachings. His person theology is based on Romans 8 and 18. For I have reckoned that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Since 2016, has, he has served as the senior pastor of the Church of Rebirth in Charlotte, North Carolina, where he sought to reach, renew, and revive. He currently serves as the senior leader of the Inner City Prophetic Ministries Charlotte under the leadership of Bishop Darius Nixon. As a mentor, Pastor Majette has been privileged to serve various youth and young adult ministries. He is the founder of the enrichment group called Raw, Real Answers Wanted. It was designed to shed light on the real world problems experienced by our church's youth. The program serves as an outlet and safe forum of young people to talk without fearful reservation of being judged. The group provides interactive sessions where those individuals can together to discuss life issues regarding church and their real world. Pastor Majet holds a bachelor's of science degree in psychology from Virginia Commonwealth University and is in pursuit of his masters of divinity. His most honorable role is father to four wonderful children, Marcus Jr., Millennia Alexia, Madison Amari, and Lennox Amari Makai. Ladies and gentlemen, the next voice you'll hear after Millennial Rucker will be Pastor Marcus Majette. Please give him a round of applause.
brand new day and for the many blessings you give me each new day and Lord for this I give every mountain for everything he's done for us we give him praise we give him glory and we give him honor it is a privilege and an honor to be here to share with you all we first give honor to your uh, our 12th president 
Dr. Jimmy Jenkins, Sr., our 13th president, Dr. Anthony Davis, to your VP of Communications, Dr. Alexander, and my friend and brother, Mr. Brown, thank you so much for this invitation. And congratulations and well wishes to the new president, your SGA president, your vice president, and all of you are your student council. Uh, I have a very easy task today um, to just to share with you all some information regarding uh, this future that you're all about to embark upon. Um, I, because I'm a pastor, the scripture I wanted to share with you all was 2 Samuel 12, chapter, verse 7. Uh, I'm a person I've loved reading from the New Revised Standard Version. It says, Nathan said to David, you are the man. <laughs> Nathan said to David, you are the man. I want to challenge your thoughts, uh, and ladies as well, just point to yourself, says, I am it. Okay, good. You, you all said it like you were scared. I need you to say it like you're more confident. Say, I am it. I am it. I am it. Um, as we embark upon life generation, as we move to this new dimension, as you all embrace your new leaders that has been set before you all, I do not want you all to abandon yourselves as who you are, who you are called to be, who you are in life. Every one of us has a purpose in life. Everyone has been called into the world for a specific reason. When you know what you've been called into the world to achieve, what your purpose is in life, you will embark upon that by any means necessary. You will do that no matter what comes and goes in your life. I'm one that teaches my church. I teach them all the time that the Bible says, and we know that all things work together for our good. Um, one of the things that I love about that, not the anything real deeper specific about it. I just love the word all, A-L-L. -L. All does not leave anything out. The decisions I got into, the things I keep making, the things I keep doing that even not, I know I'm not supposed to, but somehow God allows all of those things to work together for our good. He allows all of those things to work together for our purpose. Uh, I was reading a few months ago, one of the quotes by JFK says, if you wanna see a great success, you must first look at a great failure. Anybody who's failed at something has now become great and successful at it. As you all embark and go and move forward in school, become leaders that, as leaders to all your peers and those that are here, leaders just in life, please remember everything that you have experienced in life, again, has purpose to it. Nothing that you will go through, nothing that you have been through has even happened by happenstance, but it was by the divine purpose and will of God. Nothing that you will even walk into, nothing that your life will encounter will ultimately stop you. Look at yourself, look at where you come from. Un understand that you are here for a purpose and a reason. You are called out from a lot of places that you're from. Me, myself, I'm originally from Newport News, Virginia. Anybody that knows anything about that, they said they called us bad news. Nothing that comes out of there. So I want to encourage you all, even as a place you are, you might not have came from the best situation that anybody else has. You might not have come from the greatest place in the world. You might not have had all the appearance there with you. You might not have had even anybody there with you. But for somehow, some way, you ended up to be here. Why? Because you are it. You are who God called in this season. You are who God is going to destine in this season. One point in the Bible, in John, the first chapter, they said there was a man named Philip. He came back. He said he was heard that Jesus was in the city performing miracles. He was doing all these things out here. And somebody asked, hey, who is this guy? Where did he come from? And so one of the people that was there replied back, said he came from Nazareth. Somebody asked, could any good thing come out of Nazareth? What I'm trying to say to you all, you are about to embark into a place. You're all about to be successful. You're about to be lawyers, about to be doctors, whatever you set out in purpose to be. People are going to question, hey, where did you come from? Who are you? What is your background? And then they're going to look and they're going to see, and hey, they came from Livingstone. And they're going to question, can any good thing come out of Livingstone College? Your response to them is not to get upset. Your response to them is not to defend yourself, but your way of action is always to be successful at what you know you are. 
You should never let nobody tell you anything different knowing who you are called to be. This very familiar text that I read here where David said, he, uh, Nathan tells David, he said, you are the man. I, I looked at that and I wanted to share that with you and let you know you are it because there are going to be people that try to persuade you and get you to think that you're not who you are called to be and you're not who you're going to be in life. Never let that stop you. People will try to replace you. Uh, one of the places that they was talking about in the Bible, the Bible says that there was a man that came, Saul. He came looking for the next king. He goes to Jesse's house. Jesse has seven sons. I'll say that again. Jesse had seven sons. So he said, bring them to me. Let the oil respond and that whoever the oil pours out and responds to, that is who's going to be the king. But the crazy thing about it is there were seven people, seven sons, all of Jesse's sons passed before him. But David did not pass before him. But and so what happens there, you got to look at it. So seven sons passed before Jesse. The oil never responded. So he says, hey, there has to be, is this all your sons? Is this everybody, all your kids? He said, yes, it is. He said, there has to be a problem because I know the person who will lead us, the person who will get us to that place, God has sent me here for them. What you got to understand, in the midst of all of this, David is out in the yard working. He's doing this thing. He's tending his business. He's trying to better himself. But seven sons already passed before him. Seven sons already passed before him, but nothing happened. Understand what is happening. David is on the outside, so David makes eight. But Jesse only had seven sons. What we study and understand is they were so sure that David was not it, that they went and hired a replacement to replace that, to replace David. But the oil did never responded. Why it did not respond? Because David was the man. And I came to share with you all that I don't care what people try to do, what they try to alter you, understand you are it. What God has purpose for you, what the God has ordained and assigned you to, the oil will not respond to it. The only oil will respond to what you are assigned to do. You have a specific oil that's on your life. You have a specific purpose. You have a specific anointing that's on your life. And I know a lot of times people say the anointing and you think this is a little spooky thing, but that's not the anointing. The anointing is God's ability placed upon you. So you have a specific anointing on your life. So I don't care what happens to you, what you encounter, understand I'm going to be everything God purposed me to be because I am it and there is an anointing that's on my life. There is no debt you cannot come out of. There's no class you cannot succeed in. There's no degree you cannot achieve. There's no thing that you cannot do. There's no class that you cannot uh, be great at. There's no game for athletes you cannot achieve. Everything that is set before you before because you are anointed to be great. You are it. You are it. You are the woman. You are the man. And you're going to be whatever God purposed you to be. And before I take my seat one more time, I need you to point at yourself and say, I am it. I am it. I don't care where I came from. I don't care what's happening in my family's bloodline. I don't care what my mother and father was not successful at. I am it. I am that one that's going to break the generational curse. I am that one that's going to get the degree. I am that one that's going to pull my family out of the hood. So whatever you do, as you all embark upon this new uh, uh, transition of government, this new school year, this new way of life, I share with your leaders, vice president, president, all of you all, understand that you are it. You are in the position that you're in because you are qualified and there's an oil on you. And when you start working and responding in that, the oil will come and make everything better for you. So that is my time for the day. And I tell you again, put your hands on your chest. Whenever you get frustrated about anything, understand you will not fail and that the oil is on your life. Amen. Come on, one more time. Give him one more round of applause. The oil is on your life. Amen. At this time, you may be seated. We're going to begin the installation of our officers and follow through with the program. 
It is with pleasure that I present to you the student body of Livingstone College, the following student government officers who have been elected by you to serve your institution for the 2022-2023 school year. SGA Student Government Association President, Mr. Michael Gilliard. <laughs> Vice President, Ms. Nia McDougall. The Student Government Executive Cabinet, Mr. Lafayette Thompson, Chief of Staff. <laughs> Mr. Timothy Smith, Executive Treasurer. <laughs> Ms. Millennia Rucker, Executive Chaplain. In his absence, the Senior Class President, Mr. Emil Dogby. The Junior Class President, Mr. Austin Murphy. The sophomore class president, Ms. Nikaya Ray. And your freshman class president, Mr. L.C. Fuller. As officers elect, you must realize that the highest honor of the SGA is being bestowed upon you. It is through your office that you will grow with your capability to attain the aims and goals of the SGA. The Livingstone College SGA will benefit as you reflect your growth and knowledge back to each member. This is the key to an effective, stronger student government association. To Mr. Michael Gilliard, as president of the SGA, you are chief executive officer. This office is one of great responsibility because you, the success of this student government depends to a great deal on the attitudes and skills of the presiding officer. You shall preside at meetings of the executive board, exercise general control over the SGA, and perform these. You can ignite the ideas and suggestions among the membership to challenge them to strengthen the SGA. Presidents, my Mr. Uh, Dr. Orlando Lewis, I'm going to invite, up to invite to the podium the Vice President for Student Affairs. Can we clap it up for him? <laughs> he is going to light the candle to Mr. Michael Gilliard. Dr. Lewis will stay in here. All right, to Nia McDougall. As vice president of the SGA, you shall perform the duties and functions of the president whenever necessary, and you will serve the direct needs of the student body. The knowledge you gain will be reflected in the success of your association. Dr. Orlando Lewis. To our 94th Student Government Association President, Michael Gilliard, it is my privilege and pleasure to present to you the official gavel to the new Student Government Association President, Michael Gilliard. Before I do this, I just want to say that, Mr. President, many are chosen, but few are called. And you have been called to lead this institution student body, I want to leave you also with this, that as you go through your administration, that you have no problems but only solutions, that you have no pressures but only challenges. And with this, i like to present to you the official
at this particular time. Will each new officer please rise and raise his or her hand, right hand, and repeat the following pledge. I solemnly promise, I solemnly promise that, I will, that I will, to the best of my ability, Faithfully perform, faithfully perform all the duties, all the duties belonging, to the belonging to the office for which I have been elected. For which I have been elected. Students, of Livingstone College, Students of Livingstone College, you have, by the democratic process, you have, by the democratic process elected these officers to voice your concerns in matters relating to the functioning of the Student Government Association. Yours is the task of assisting of in every way possible, no matter how small or how large, the individual contribution, the individual contribution. It, is the it is the cooperation of each student body member, body member. that makes for, that makes for success and causes these officers, causes these officers to, become to become more professional in the work, in the work they strive to do. Do you promise to support your student government executive cabinet? Please say, I do. I do. To the new SGA officers, I dare you. If you have a gift, bring it. If you have a talent, use it. If you have sadness, bear it. If you have religion, live it. If you have a kind word, say it. We have all, we have all have gifts that we can bring. We all have songs that we can sing. We all have kind words that we can say. We all have prayers that we can pray. We all have joy and love to give. And what a joy life is to live. If we just scatter everywhere, these things that God has given us to share. If you have a song, sing it. If you have love, spread it. If you have gladness, share it. If you have a prayer, pray it. You all can be seated. At this particular time, I would like to invite our esteemed President, Dr. Jimmy R. Jenkins, Sr., to please come forward and introduce Dr. Anthony Davis, our 13th president. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. Good morning. Good morning. Let me first of all congratulate you for your diligence and hard work in rising to this occasion. I want you to know that it's lonely at the top. I want you to also know that heavy is the head that wears the crown, but you are equipped and prepared to do it, and I'm honored today. 17 years or so ago, I met a young man doing the with the search process for the 12th president of Livingstone College. He asked me a lot of questions during that period of time. And then subsequently when I was selected as the 12th president, I was asked to come to the campus on a convocation in February. I came out of Florida with my Florida seersucker suit and I didn't realize the weather change between Florida and here. When I got here, it was snowing. And, and this man gave me his overcoat to be able to, to move around the campus. 
And so then becoming president of the college, he was the vice president for institutional advancement. And I can tell you he worked hard and did his, and, and carried out his duties with diligence and, and challenge. And I was very proud of that. He subsequently went on to become vice president of the consortium, a national organization that raised money to help young men and women like you go get into major institutions. He raised about $50 million in a program of that sort. And so I invited him to come back to the campus to work with me and with the administration and asked him to be the senior vice president and chief operating officer, which he did. And so he has worked, he has earned his way, he has climbed to the top. And so it is my distinct honor and my pleasure to present to you for the charge, the 12th, the 13th president. I'm the 12th, <laughs> I'm the 12th. The 13th president of Livingstone College, Dr. Anthony Davis. Watch your rise and show them a hand. Please be seated. Before I say another word, I want to thank Dr. Jimmy R. Jenkins, Sr., our 12th president, who provided stellar, strategic, selfless, 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 servant leadership to this institution. Let's give it up for Dr. Jimmy R. Jenkins, Sr., our 12th president. And to this student body, the officers who were just installed, I greet you this morning in the only name that I know to call. To the one who stepped out on nothing, reached back to nowhere, and between nowhere and somewhere, he said, let it be, and it was. You know who I'm talking about, the great God Almighty. Hold fast to dreams. Because when dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams. Because when dreams go, life is a barren field frozen with snow. I had to learn that poem when I was in fourth grade and recited at a school assembly. And it has proven to be a point of inspiration for me. And I hope that I might be able to pass that on to you. They asked me to stand as the 13th president to give this charge and to our speaker, uh, Brother Majet, Pastor Majet, can we give him a hand? <laughs> man, man, I am ordained clergy, although I am the president and I believe in the 10 commandments, thou shalt not steal, but I'm gonna use that, brother. <laughs> Thou should not steal, but I'm going to use that when I am it. I am that. To dare is better than to doubt, for doubt is always grieving. Tis faith that finds the riddle out, the prize is for believing. To the administration, faculty, staff, visiting friends, and to the officers who have been installed, I greet you in blue bear love. Today is a special day. Today we have installed a group of individuals who've been elected by their peers. However, although you have been elected, I think we minimize the moment, Michael, if we just look at this as an election. You see, my charge to you, all of you, is to look beyond this being an election but take it as an opportunity to be exemplary. 
exemplary by definition means a model representing the best of its kind, exemplary, a model representing the best of its kind. But in order to do that, you must dissect this day. First of all, this is the day that the Lord has made and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Holler back at me if you hear me. You see, this day, as you officially assume your duties and responsibilities, I want you to know that you've been endowed. It is important to know that although you were selected and elected, prior to that, you were also endowed. You see, yes, you were elected by the student body, but make no mistake about it, God endowed you. You were endowed with assets, ability, and acumen. You were endowed with assets, ability, and acumen. You need to recognize where those assets, that ability, and that acumen came from. It came from the God who made water wet and grass green. The great God Almighty, the creator of all things, was the one who endowed you. And he did it while you were yet formed. It was God who endowed you with those assets, ability, and acumen. And he did so because for such a time as this, he gave you the gifts and talents to lead the student body as we exit one of the most painful periods in our history. He endowed you. That's why you were elected by the student body. The student body saw something in you. They saw the assets, the ability, and the acumen. That's why we are here. You were elected, and I said you were endowed, but you were also entrusted. Somebody say entrusted. This body elected you because they trust you to lead, so lead. John Maxwell says that there are five levels to leadership. Position, permission, perf performance, people development, and pinnacle. But it's that second level that's most critical. It's the level where people give you permission to lead them. You've been entrusted to lead, but the people have to give you permission to lead them. Think about this. They entrusted you enough to cast a vote that you might be their voice. They entrusted you not to promote your own agenda, but a student-driven agenda. They entrusted you not to be self-serving, but to serve the student body. They entrusted you to govern and execute your authority consistent with the SGA Constitution. But here's one of the most important lessons to remember about trust. It takes years to build, seconds to break, and forever to repair. Can I say that again? It takes years to build, seconds to break, and forever to repair. I charge and challenge you never to breach the trust of those who entrusted you with this awesome assignment. And lastly, yes, you were elected, empowered, endowed, but hear this. Be careful with this last one because this one is simple, but it's complicated. You were empowered. By defini de definition, it says you've been given the authority to do something, empowered. But here's the tragedy of empowerment. You see, to be given, Dr. Lewis, the authority to do something, and you do absolutely nothing. That's the tragedy of empowerment. If you have the power, you have to leverage it, because if you don't leverage it, it's nothing more than potential, and potential is overrated, but you have been empowered to do something. But be careful while you're doing something, because you remember what Lord Creighton said when he talks about power. He said, power tends to corrupt, but absolute power corrupts absolutely. Use your power to make a difference. Use your power to bring about change. Use your power to make things better for the people you serve. You've been empowered to put in the work. You've been charged to put in the work because if you put in the work, people will see your worth. After this installation, the Gillian McDougal administration, make no mistake about it, it is time for you to go to work. 
not tomorrow, but today. And I close with a quote from one of my heroes, W.E.B. Du Bois, when he said, now is the accepted time. Not tomorrow, not some convenient season. It is today that our best work can be done and not some future day or future year. It is today that we fit ourselves for the greater usefulness of tomorrow. Today is the seed time and now are the hours of work. Tomorrow comes the harvest and the play time. This is the charge to this new administration, the Gilead McDougal administration. Peace and blessings. I'm Dr. Anthony Davis, Davis, the 13th president, and this is the charge to the Student Government Association. Michael Gilliard, our SGA president. Let's give him a hand. Thank you, Dr. Davis, our 13th president of Livingstone College. I accept the charge. Um, I'll, you know, I'd like to be brief. You all can be seated. <laughs> this morning, I woke up and looked at the date, and I was like, the 28th? of September, and I remember this time last year on the 28th of September, this exact day, I had to fly home because I ended up having pneumonia. And I got home and I was trying to get treated and but you know, I found out down here that I was sick, but I was going to urgent care and they prescribed me the wrong medication and it was progressing. So by the time I got home and with the doctors working and stuff like that, I ended up having double pneumonia. That time for me was very challenging because I'd never really been sick before. It was just like, am I gonna make it out of this? Because it was like every time I would go and get a report, it would be something different when it would be chest x-rays and this and that, and I would find out that I thought I was getting better, but in all reality, I was getting worse. And it's a song that I like, and anybody who's around me knows, especially the Amen Corner, we're gonna talk about Lafayette and Charlie. It's a song called It'll be all over in the morning. That song spoke to me because it taught me that no matter what may come during the night, that morning teaches us brand new mercies. Livingstone College, Student Government Association, faculty and staff and administration. If I haven't learned anything in my life, I've learned that night won't last always. I remember during my time being sick, it would be at nighttime, I would always feel my worst. It would be during the night and I wouldn't understand why. I kept saying, well, why does it, I can be okay during the day. But when night would come, I would just be out of it. But it was one night I prayed and I told God, I said, God, if this is the life that you want me to live, that if I'm gonna have to go to doctor, to doctor appointment after doctor appointment, can't drive, can't do this, can't do that, that I usually would do, you could take me now because I can't do that. <laughs> and then the next morning, literally the next morning, it was over. <laughs> and so that's why I have that saying, ain't no need of worrying what the night is gonna bring because it'll be all over in the morning. It may have took about four or five months for me to get back to myself, but it just lets me know that it's always gonna be an end time to your suffering. If any of you may be going through anything right now, just know that it will come to an end, okay? Because during that time, and I, I'm not emotional, it did something to my mental. But God is still good, and I'm gonna thank him for what he's done, but I already wanna thank him. I wanna show him appreciation for what he's also doing. So thank you all for coming, especially my family for driving down last night. <laughs> and, you know, to my board, you know, they know me. <laughs> so it's not too much to say. I will say that I will be very honest. I do not play. So they some tough cookies because they lasted. But <laughs> all right, thank you all.
Let me also do this, because I will be out of order. To my advisor, Mr. Anthony Brown. Oh, Mr. Brown, you know, I've been in SGA since I've gotten to Livingstone College in 2019. And since 2019, people always say me and Mr. Brown are like this, but we clash. <laughs> But it's always for good reasoning because he's always trying to teach me how to listen. Sometimes I can block out what you're saying and I just want to hear it my way. But he's teaching me constantly on how to listen to other people as well. And also with Dr. Lewis, I appreciate you as well because you know, I'll, for that open door policy, because I will walk up in his office and we'll have a good old conversation. But I definitely appreci appreciate you too and Dr. Jenkins for me being the first bridge student to come out of bridge to be the SGA president. So that's also something that I'm grateful for. And Dr. Davis, during freshman convocation when I came in, I remember you said, you must be ready. That was one thing that stuck with me. And no matter what may come, I had no choice but to be ready. So thank you for preparing me for my readiness. Ladies and gentlemen, our Student Government Association President and Cabinet. Let's clap it up for them one more time. We are just about done, so bear with us a few more moments, please. The next voice you'll hear is Mr. Kion Courtney, who's gonna give us a lecture, followed by a motivational vi video, and then we will pray out. All right, Mr. Kion Courtney, Mr. Freshman. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, and for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone, and I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I leave my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, and for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. And I can sing to you this song. And I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Love me in your arms. And you were my shelter from the storm When all my friends were gone You were right there all alone And I've never known a love like this before And I just want to say that I Love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. And uh, I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. 
Whoa, I love you, Jesus, and I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Whoa. to tell you that I love you more than anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you that I love you. I love you. I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Whoa. I love you, Jesus. Lord, I love you more than anything. Go ahead and play that track back. I'm not going to sing, but I'm going to minister for a minute. See, God knows what he's doing. What I want to do right now, I want to minister for a moment. First of all, I thank the God that I serve, and I love him more than anything. Anybody else here love him more than anything? You got to love him more than your boo. You got to love him more than your cars, the houses, the cash. How many of you love him more than anything? What I want to do today is I want to have a special prayer. Normally, we would close this celebration because that's what it is with the alma mater. But there's a sweet spirit in this place. And I know it's the presence of the Lord. There's a sweet expression on everybody's face. And I know it's nothing but the presence of the Lord. I know I'm not being presidential. I'm being pastoral today. My tenure starts three days from now, but I'm being pastoral today. Somebody here needs to be prayed for. We're going to pray for you before you leave this room today because we know. But listen, I want to tell you coming attractions next Monday we begin the Davis administration as president and I want to celebrate the man whose shoulders I stand on, Dr. Jimmy Arjun, with more time. Thank you. Thank you. You'll get notices that we're going to have prayer at the bear at 9 a.m. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's on and popping. Prayer at the bear, 9 a.m. You better be there. <laughs> Come on and give God a hand, praise in the place. Who needs prayer? Just raise your hand where you are. Just who needs prayer? Do you need it bad enough to just meet me right here to the podium? Can you come out if you need it? You know, you don't have to come, but will you come? Will you come with me? If you need it, come on, it's all right. Man, I wish I could sing. I, I sing it. I love Jesus. I worship and adore. Just want to tell you that. 
I'm gonna leave this singing to the people who can sing. Y'all go ahead and sing that one time for me. Go ahead and do it for me. Where's my brother at? Who's singing what? I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you. Somebody next to you. Eternal God, we come. We thank you for this day. Lord, you woke us up this morning and we thought we were coming to an installation service, but God, you turned it into a revival. God, we are revived today. Hallelujah, thine the glory revive us. God, we pray for every young person in this auditorium. The Lord, that the traps that the enemy may have set, this day we trip every trap. God, we pray for this administration as they lead this institution on behalf of the student body. We thank you. We thank you, oh God, for the faculty, staff, and administration who serve the present age. Now, God, we're going to have to leave this place. But, God, we're not going to leave your spirit. But we thank you for this day. And, God, we'd be remiss if we didn't say for every mountain you brought us over, for every valley you brought us through, for every blessing we say hallelujah, and we give you praise. Now, may the grace of God. The sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. May it rest, rule, and abide in your hearts and minds since now and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Go ahead and hug three people. Tell them that you love them. To God be praised. We're going to do the video and then we're going to depart. We got out of order, but prayer was in order. We got to do the video. Prayer was in order. We're going to do the video. And then after the video, you are dismissed with the heavenly benediction. Hug somebody. Tell them that you love them. And tell them this is going to be a brand new year. making this video to wish you a great rest of the year. I also want to say thank you for all the encouragement you've given me and the fact that you're a part of the reason that I even uh, ran for freshman class president and you helped me when I was in bridge and everything like that. I also want to wish Nia a great rest of the year also and thank her for the encouragement that she has given me. What's good, Mike? This is Xavier Hamlin, uh, Mr. 1879. P.S. your favorite bridge student. Um, <clears throat> I'm wishing you a great rest of your year on your big accomplishments. I'm very proud of you. Um, <clears throat> one thing I learned from Michael is uh, there's a time and a place for everything. I take that with me every day um, since he said it and you know taught it to me. So yeah, I thank you a lot, Mike. Yo, what's good, Mike? say congratulations on being the 94th uh, SGA president of Livingstone College. I want to take the time to appreciate you for helping me throughout everything from the time I walked in the tub to get registered up until now. You have definitely helped me and given me the best advice anyone has. And uh, I wish you well on this journey. Can't wait to get started. Greetings to you all. I am Terrence Bernard McPherson. Sophomore elementary education scholar student athlete from Tallahassee, Florida, and I currently serve as a 2022-2023 Mr. Sophomore. Uh, while I've been working with Michael, he has been nothing but amazing energy and time being with him. Uh, he's such a great leader. 
Um, that's one of the people I look up to that's in SGA and Royal Court as, as of right now. Um, every time I'm around him, he's dedicated, has amazing energy and everything, but he smiles and gives us like, every time I'm with him, you know how to, that's on the all switch when it comes to business and just being a regular college student. Um, so, one thing I can say is, Michael, uh, I hope you have an amazing 2022, 2023 school year as your SGA president and just stay strong and continue to do what you're doing best. Hey Michael, I just want to say thank you for everything that you do for me and the school. And I know we butt heads a lot, but I really appreciate you. And I wish you well for the rest of the school year. And as you grow into the man that you are going to be into the future. And Nia, I want to thank you also because you do a lot for us. You do a lot for SGA, you do a lot for the school. And I know things can get hard, but I really appreciate you and I just want to express that to you. Greetings, I am Emil Dobby and I'm the senior class president and also Michael's friend. So Michael has had a great impact on my life, knowing him, being able to spend some, a lot of time with him over the summer. We've had some good and bad experiences. We also talk about SGA, life in general, and also how we gonna make an impact. And I know he has a lot of good stuff he wants to get put in place, especially in relation to the student's retention rate and graduation, as well as professional development, and also making sure that students have the best experience they can on campus. So I really wish him all the best during this academic year, and I hope all his plans come to fruition even as we journey into this 2022-2023 academic year. What's up everybody? It's the 18th Mr. Livingstone College here. And I would love to give my words about Michael Gilliard. Um, it's many words that come to my head when I think of Michael Gilliard. Number one, a strong leader. Number two, a good friend, an accountability partner, somebody that's real get on me and make sure he wants the best for you. Um, one thing that I've learned from Michael is just being comfortable with who you are and not, not changing for nobody else. And I'm just telling you right now, he's a good president. Um, I appreciate his leadership. I, I hope the whole SGA World Corps appreciate him as much as I do. But you all really appreciate it. to do a motivational video about Michael, Mikiel Myers. So, ever since freshman year, Michael has always been a little pain in the butt. But we always learn to love him because Michael is a person that brings the laughter, the joy, the strength, the frustration, and everything all in one to our friend circle. He's the type of person that loves very hard, and if you hurt him, you hurt him, and he does not have a problem letting you know because he's going to let you know. Ever since his freshman year, he wanted to run for freshman class president, and he did, and when he ran, he conquered with his construction hat and all. If you know, you know. You are very lucky to have him as your SGA president this year because he is truly one of a kind the original Mikiel Myers.
What's up, LC family? Um, I just wanted to come and congratulate Michael and Nia on their inauguration and swearing in. And I hope you guys have a great and successful year. I know your administration will run very smoothly under the leadership of you all. And I wish you all the best. Um, Michael, I just want to give you a few words of inspiration. From the very first day that I met you, you had leader written all over you. I hope that you have a great year. Um, I hope that God equips you with the knowledge and the strength to lead the campus the way that he sees fit through you. And um, I love you forever. And you know, I'm always here if you need me and I wish you the best. Greetings, Livingstone College. I am Anthony Brown, Director for Student Activities and the proud advisor to Mr. Michael D'Angelo Gilliard. You're 94th Student Government Association president. Listen, one thing's for sure and two things for certain. <laughs> that was what Michael's words when I first met him. Um, since his freshman year, I've always known Michael to be a leader who plays no games. Listen, if you are working with him, you need to know that you're gonna work and you're gonna work well. Um, Michael, man, I love you, I'm proud of you. I'm so glad to have had this opportunity to watch you matriculate from freshman year all the way down to your senior year. Wow, you're almost to the finish line and I look forward to being there with you in May. But more importantly, I wanna say, take this reign and run it with integrity, okay? Make sure that you keep your board close to you. Nia, our Student Government Association Vice President, I'm so proud of you since I've met you. I truly know, have known you to be a leader and I know that you're gonna work so well with Michael hand in hand with the SGA. To the rest of the board, I can't wait to see all of the great things that you're gonna do. And as you know, Mr. Anthony Brown is always gonna be here for you from here, now, and forever. All right, love y'all. Come up and sit with me. I'm always here.